Jean Baptiste Augustine, a battle hardened elite combat medic and ex Talon operative, Baptiste now uses his skills to help those whose lives have been impacted by war. He was just one of 30 million children orphaned by the Omnic Crisis, growing up to enlist in the Caribbean Coalition military, formed in response to the crisis. After his service, he struggled to find work, lured in by the promise of easy money. Baptiste joined Talon, unaware of Talon's true nature. Determined to forge a new path from the evil of Talon, Baptiste drifted from place to place, aiding in humanitarian efforts all around the globe. There were a few Talon operatives who continued to track Baptiste down, but coincidentally, they have never been seen again. Baptiste is a skilled marksman, despite being a medic at heart, with unusually high levels of endurance, versatility, and even luck. Baptiste heals where he can and fights when he must. In try mode, now we're going to take a look at Baptiste's gun, his abilities, and his passives. Up first, we do have the support roll, which means we are going to be automatically healing over time. If we take some damage, all we have to do is wait, and slowly we will heal that back up. Our other passive is the exo boot that you just saw. If we crouch, we gain up a charge, we build up a charge that allows us to then erupt with some explosive upward velocity. And and scale very large distances. We do hold on to that charge for a little bit of time, so you don't have to jump right away, but as you can see here, if I charge it and run too much, I will have to charge it fully again. You are predictable with this movement, so I would recommend getting used to smaller hops, get used to the height you need to get to get on stuff, and just do that, because if you're playing against, you know, Good Widowmaker, and you're this far in the air, well, let's just say your head might not come down with you. All of Baptiste's abilities, to me, come off as easy easy to understand, but really difficult to master. And I think the exo boots are a perfect example of that. As far as our gun, we have 45 rounds to put down range in a three shot burst style weapon. As a former competitive Halo player, I love myself a battle rifle. So I felt right at home immediately using this gun. Baptiste doesn't have any crowd control to speak of, but what he does have is raw stopping power. And this gun will be effective all the way up to I believe 25 meters is when we start to get some damage fall off and then at 45 meters it really starts to hit like a wet noodle so as long as you're playing in mid-range you are absolutely lethal let me give you an example let's say there's a tracer on the enemy team and she gets a little too close problem solved <laughs> <laughs> there is a bit of recoil when using this weapon though. So as I fire, you can see three shots come out and they steadily rise vertically. It's a very easy recoil pattern. And if you want to go to the extra mile, you can actually counter it. So see the hop here? If I just pull down on my mouse while I'm doing the three shot burst, I can keep it a little more controlled than what that's doing over there. It does take some extra practice. Once again, simple gun on the surface surface, but there is a lot you really need to master here. The right click for our weapon is a healing grenade. If we fire this at a friendly player, they are going to receive bonus healing, but then radiate healing out to allies. If we fire this in between the two bots, they'll both get the smaller amount of healing that gets radiated. I think it's like 20 less per shot or something. We can work healing grenades into our DPS combo by just firing a shot and then shooting a heal grenade immediately after. Once again, easy concept, but difficult to master. Keep in mind that with the right click grenade, there is a substantial travel time and a substantial bullet drop with this as well. If you're trying to heal someone from far away, you're gonna have to lead that shot by a lot and aim high. Our shift ability is called Regenerative Burst. This is going to be a quick heal to friendlies in line of sight, as well as a heal over time as well. It is on a hefty cooldown, so it's simply there to supplement what you're doing with your right clicks, but can help out in a pinch. It's also worth noting your right click grenades do not heal Baptiste, but our shift would. 15 second cooldown, simple concept, but you gotta use it wisely. 
Our E ability is the Immortality Field. If we use this, we're going to send out this space-aged hockey puck to hover in the air. And while it's there, none of our allies are able to die. You can see after it goes away, they are very much vulnerable. But it pauses their health, so it gives you time to sneak in your heals before they take that fatal damage. It does have a very long cooldown of 25 seconds and just as much health as our friendly Tracer bot over here. So it can be shot down and it will be shot down. However, let's say we're fighting downrange just like this. I can toss the hockey puck there. It's completely protected from these guys. And then suddenly I don't have to worry about healing at all. I can go full damage for a few seconds and try to just eliminate targets. You can also use it to protect your allies if they're trying to get a high value ultimate off or something. There's a lot of uses. And when we do our show match, I'll try to communicate why I'm using it when I am. Our ultimate ability is the Amplification Matrix. You will likely never hear a player call it that though. It is usually referred to as window. If we shoot or anyone on our team shoots through this window, it's going to amplify the damage of all projectiles that pass through it. Damage gets increased by 100%. So does healing, by the way. I didn't know that before I started researching this video. If you want to see just what the difference is, here's a full health Roadhog without window being placed. Here's a full health Roadhog with window placed. That is three shots from our weapon. Well, three bursts from our weapon. That is insanely fast. And it's not just amplifying my damage. It's any ally that shoots through it as well. There is a bit of an art to placing these. For instance, you can cast it all the way over there, but then you're gonna get mixed results on when it is going to be effective. One tip that I was given that really helped me out with the window is not placing it necessarily in a tight corridor like this. Yes, indeed, I could shoot the crap out of that robot at the end of this hallway, but one thing that might allow us to get more value out of the window is placing it on a corner like this. Suddenly I can get a view of the same guy here and his friend over there and our damage drop off's gonna kick in, but I can shoot at these guys down the road. Oh, we're being flanked, perfect. I'll just push through the window and shoot behind me. Gives you a lot more options and a lot more lethality as a team. As always, if you feel like I missed anything in our ability recap, please be sure to let me know down in the comments. I have really found quite a love for this character. He was one I didn't play at all until prepping for the A through Z, and I really, really enjoy him. I hope it shows in our match today. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves on Esperanza today attacking, but this is a tug of war map. So we'll see how that goes. The friendly team is Roadhog, Junkrat, Lucio, Genji, and myself. If we stagger deaths on this map, it can be a little hard to come back from, but if our team stays unified, uh, we actually have a pretty scary cop. As the doors open, we're gonna be making our way down Main Street. Unfortunately, I don't have any way to make myself run faster, but Lucio is giving our whole team a boost to the front line. Now, to start things off, I would prefer to be on the high ground, so I'm gonna use our charge jump to get exactly up there. Enemy Junkrat on the far side is already sending some grenades towards us. I'm kind of wasting grenades on our allies here. They weren't damaged yet, and I need to be mindful that that is a limited resource, but they just completely completely devour the enemy team's Junkrat as they move through. Our Lucio's taking a lot of damage on the back line. Let's see if we can help out. Enemy Lucio is dead as we punch him in the back. Uh, Reaper is taking a lot of damage next to us. We were just booped away as he, I believe, was... Oh, teleporting to us. I thought he teleported away. That was weird. Uh, everyone seems to be holding on, and we're behind the enemy team's Doomfist. Not losing anyone there. Enemy team's Junkrat is respawning as the push begins. Let's see if we can get a shot on his head. There we go. Perfect. Chasing him down the street. Splitting their deaths even more, which is exactly what we want to do to gain momentum here. If you're the type of player that doesn't look at what your team is doing when you run back to the objective, you're causing so many problems, and you may not even know it, like that Junkrat. Look how much momentum 
they lost because they couldn't group up as five again. We've been pushing for like 30 seconds now. We see enemy Roadhog at the end of the street. We do pretty good damage to him, but of course we do need to dodge that hook, and I have a feeling it's coming soon. There it was. Reaper behind us. I'm going to just drop the immortality field now because I'm very afraid of his up-close damage. As he tries to run away, we're simply going to back up. Our Roadhog is taking a lot of damage, trying to heal him up with our shift. Uh, our Lucio also being a champ, staying in there and keeping him alive really, really well. That's going to be Roadhog's ult. If I can put a window up in front of him, that would be so much damage, but I was just a little short. Now I need to take some of my own advice and haul butt out of here because this enemy team is in a full fighting force and we are not. But I think I made it out for the time being, meeting up with our Cassidy on on this side street. If our team takes the shortcut, we might be a little out of luck, but let's go ahead and just drop window here and try to put some damage down range. Uh, immortality field on our friends to try to keep him alive as the enemy team's Junkrat does push us back. That's a tire behind the information center. They can't stop him from getting that off. So all in all, not the most effective window, but it did put pressure on them to react. If that guy just stood there, I would have been able to kill him. We saw what our target dummy damage was like in try mode. Uh, shift on our Roadhog to keep him alive and as he's standing in this doorway we're just gonna hold left click and right click at the same time trying to heal him up reaper behind so we put the immortality field down that's not gonna last much longer as that huge ult comes around the corner that coupled with the moira ult takes out our entire team so far 2000 damage actually keeping up with the damage dealers on our team and just under 2000 healing Enemy team has taken the lead, but this match is far from over. Looks like our Junkrat is going for the flank. I'm going to wait for our Roadhog to see what he wants to do. They officially are in the lead. Let's see how this corner plays out here. The hook does land. I wanted to put damage in, but they killed the guy before I could even help. Uh, we're just going to put left clicks into their tank as we're pushing forward. Heals on ours as often as I can. I'm also going to use my shift here. Immortality field on our tank as the enemies ultimate does go off now i'm trying to get to him to heal but line of sight is a mother trucker isn't it enemy kiriko will be taken down by the three shot burst i have no healing for myself because our shift was on cooldown and it looks like lucio is currently in a 1v2 that push didn't quite work and they are still moving the payload further they got about another 20 meters since we last respawned Lucio's going to be behind me, so I'm not going to wait for that. He's faster than me. I'm going to keep going, and we'll try to meet up with our Roadhog yet again. Reaper sending some damage down Main Street. Most of our guys are on the high ground at the moment. These shifts aren't great. There we go. Or these right clicks aren't great. I also have Immortality Field if, the, if we need it. But the enemy tank actually swapped out to Junker Queen, and we were able to roll right over her there. Pushing up with our Cassidy because we did see the enemy tank, but I'm not going to go that far away from our team just to chase a kill. That's kind of his pr prerogative. If he wants to do that, we'll let him do that. Uh, we are back to the middle of the map. We do have window. I'll be sure to let the friendly team know that as well. Reaper taken down as we go around the corner. This could be a great corner for our window. Let's try to make it work. Junker Queen pressing the advantage. I'm going to just drop it here. Man, wouldn't it be good if I could land some shots too? This would be extra nice if we had a, like a hit scan character like Soldier 76 behind us or, you know, our Cassidy behind us that could really pump out some shots through that window. But hey, this is looking okay. We have a shift to keep everybody alive. I'm going to put some damage into Junker Queen now. Immortality Field is down to save our Cassidy, and I don't know if it was actually effective. Reaper does go down. Junker Queen taking a lot of damage here as well. Mercy with the res bringing our Cassidy back into the game. And there we go as we push this corner. This should be good. I haven't had great windows, but one thing we do need to mention is that we build that ultimate up very, very quickly. It's one of the fastest in the game to build. And I have the opinion that it's better to use it than lose it. And I mean, you don't you don't lose it, but if it's just sitting there, it's not getting any value. One thing I could have done better is maybe move the window up a little closer to my Roadhog. I will fully admit that I do practice a lot for these A through Z episodes. I take them really seriously. I always have, even with the Heroes ones. Uh, but I do 
do still have a lot of room to improve on this character, that is for sure. Jugger Queen getting behind us there as we were trying to keep everyone alive in the street. We do get taken down. 3,766 damage, 3,432 healing. Will I be a DPS or a healer at the end of this game? Let's find out. We did almost make an even push. Four minutes remaining here. They are at 87 meters. We're at 77. But look how far back they have to walk to get to us. And this is where we can kind of stop their momentum or lose a lot of our own. Uh, we do see our Roadhog with a, good, with a good hook on Junker Queen. Lucio in there, super low on health as well. Ooh, whoever that was is taken down up top. I couldn't even tell. Our Roadhog did push up really far. I'm thinking it was because of a Junker Queen knife, though. That res is happening, but Mercy does get taken down. Didn't see her weak behind me. That's on me. Shots on Junker Queen. Not going great, but there we go. We got it. And we'll try to heal up our Roadhog. We have window yet again. I'm going to let my team know. As soon as I see our adversaries, I want to use it because we know their tank is already dead and their team is already already split in some capacity. If we can make that worse, that would be really good. Just like that. That hit onto the enemy teams. Uh, I don't know who that was. I forgot already. <laughs> Cassidy, Reaper, one of those guys was pretty good. If there were more reinforcements, we could have done a bit more with that window there, but it didn't quite work out. I have Immortality Field ready for this corner if our Roadhog needs it. We can also throw it across the street. That's one thing I didn't mention in try mode either, is this thing actually has really good range on it, and you could chuck it to your teammates if they need it. You just have to get used to that trajectory. Taking a lot of damage in the back. I'm actually just going to hang out in this building, I think. We totally broke line of sight. We should be fine. Our our Mercy does get taken down, but I should be able to save our Roadhog, I think. Junker Queen taking a lot of damage as she's moving down the street. I see you back there. I'm trying to heal you, Junk Rat. I'm trying to heal you. And all of a sudden, we have a lot of momentum. I'm putting the Immortality Field down because I didn't know how much damage was coming around that corner there, and I wanted to make sure that our teammates were indeed safe. And if you saw that prompt, we did indeed save his life. Uh, if I didn't use it there, I could have used it while he was channeling that high noon to make sure, like, cement its value. You know, if he could see someone, he's going to be able to kill him because he can't die. Tried to heal our Mercy in midair, just short. That's why healing Pharah is so hard to. But the team is still pretty unified. Immortality field down on the point. I died, but maybe I can keep someone else alive. No, he kills it at the same time as well. Good try. Good try. Yeah, you could see him just eat that alive. Reaper with a really good flank there. We did, however, push 132 meters with just over a minute left in the game. The enemy team has a long way to push that back. We see Lucio coming back towards our team so we can speed boost in with them. Let's make sure we group up with them. I hope I don't get left behind. I saw the play, Lucio. I want to be here. Uh, we see our Cassidy taking a lot of damage on the corner. Junk Rat died. I tried to give him an immortality field as well. That means I'm at a very big deficit now. Kiriko, however, my headshots found their target. And she's taken down as Junker Queen and her were making a mad dash to try to get this payload moving. 34 seconds left in the game. They will have time to contest again. We have yet another window ready to go in just 1%. I'm going to let the team know. This is a perfect spot for that window place it here play the corner eat these guys alive as they move up on us immortality field so i don't have to worry about any of this healing we're then going to shift heal right out of that and start to right click onto our tank uh, while we're also firing left clicks through this group as well health getting low as we do get pushed by the enemy team's cassidy and taken down man that grenade had my name on it didn't it but How's this going? We still have two, three alive over there at least fighting on the point. That's four alive fighting on the point. Maybe that immortality field was enough to keep someone alive. And with just a few feet left to go, doesn't even matter. We ran the timeout. That's going to be GG. Still a lot of things I need to practice to get better at on this character, but I mean it when I say it. I'm really falling in love with them. Super fun play style. I really, really like it. And hopefully you guys enjoyed our A through Z show case for him. Up next, we're going to have Bastion. Be sure you're subscribed to check back for that. And let's see this play of the game. Is it a high dude from the high ground? Oh, yes, indeed it is. Not too shabby, my friend. I'll see you guys next time.